And uh, November 15th is a very important day for Cuban people, as the students return to in-person activities after being vaccinated. Also, the island resumes tourism and the borders reopening. However, November 15th is also the date that opposition and anti-revolutionary groups chose to conduct a march and possible destabilizing actions. It is, with no doubts, a complex day and scenario in the island. To dialogue on the matter and offer his analysis, we have the honor to receive René Gonzalez, pilot, author, political analyst, and homeland hero for all the Cubans. Be welcome, René. Uh, have a good day, and uh, well, I'm happy to be here. Uh, my best to you and to all the audience. So thank you for your presence. Now we have uh, a first question to you. As we have been reporting, Cuba saw violent protests on July 11th and in some way ignited new actions like the ones that, we are, that are called for today. There are summoning the population for a so-called Pacific March. But what's really behind this announcement? Well, this is uh, uh, one of the m so many tricks on the, on the arsenal of uh, uh, attacks against Cuba by the U.S. government. Uh, I remember when I was in the United States infiltrating those terrorist groups, uh, all of them uh, claimed to be uh, pacifists. So this is nothing new. And uh, as usual, they need uh, uh, a victim uh, who they uh, later can claim to defend by applying this um, responsibility to protect uh, uh, concept that they had devised uh, for, uh, for a few years uh, already. So this is nothing new. That's the way they operate. Uh, it's uh, having somebody who, who might claim to be victimized in this case by the Cuban government uh, so as to allow then the U.S. government to, as we know, uh, claim the, uh, the necessity to come and, you know, save the poor people who are trying to defend democracy in the country and so on and so much. Uh, that's how they work. Um, we have to be prepared for it, and as a matter of fact, I believe we are prepared for it. Yeah, actually, this is nothing new, as you were saying, and also maybe it's nothing new what I'm going to ask you right now, but it has called the attention of many Cubans who live abroad and Cuba friends also, how these groups use several of the traditional symbols in this island, like the white color and specifically the white rose that comes from the verses of our national hero, Jose Martí. Are they trying to subvert these symbols and why to use them in their campaign? Well, I believe one of the, the goals of these people is, uh, is to uh, sow confusion. Uh, of course, those are symbols which are cherished uh, by the Cuban people, uh, especially the young Cubans, and uh, they uh, aspire to, to confuse uh, some people with their uh, uh, use of those symbols, with uh, speech uh, who uh, seems to be from the left. Uh, they mix all those uh, symbols and this speech with uh, some uh, uh, claims as to representing the, uh, the aspirations and the worries of the, of the, uh, the common people. Uh, that, that's all part of, the, of how they uh, try to uh, attract uh, elements from the population who might be uh, maybe disgruntled for, for anything or uh, who are uh, living through different times, as we all know. And uh, it's part of this uh, psychological warfare, which uh, so well they have uh, practiced for uh, so many years uh, against any a country which uh, goes against the will of the U.S. government. Again, it's, it's nothing new. It's, it's on the all, all of the manuals from the CIA and from uh, the destabilization tools that they use, and uh, that's also part of it. Uh, we have to, to be aware they're using people who are young. Uh, I was watching yesterday some pictures, and even from the way they dress, the way they look, uh, they try to appeal to the youngest Cubans in the hopes of, the, of, of uh, being able to confuse them after the old generations, which uh, has a, a more political experience, which have a different uh, uh, experience of life, like myself, uh, 
had. And so this is part of the, their efforts to, uh, and their aspirations to uh, give a coup de grace to the revolution once the older generations are no longer in, in, the, in the country. Yeah, indeed, these are old strategies. This is an old dog with a new color. Is what we say. Now, uh, we have stated many times that these groups use a soft skill strategy with a narrative of this contempt and popular outrage. Which are the means and platforms they use to spread their messages? Well, nowadays, and after they, they, they uh, developed these uh, color revolutions, and uh, we have to understand that they, they are, uh, the imperialism is, uh, is good at, at learning uh, from their experiences. And uh, the color revolutions uh, were successful in, in Eastern Europe, mostly, and some other places in the world, because they were able to mobilize a critical mass of people uh, so as to be able to then uh, sell to the rest of the world uh, the story that the whole population is revolting, et cetera, et cetera. It's, uh, uh, I mean, they don't need uh, nowadays to, to have a an entire population revolving against the government to overthrow it. They just need a critical mass which can present as uh, representing the rest of the population and the media will do the, the rest. Uh, that's how they are working nowadays. They try this in Cuba anytime they feel that Cuba is uh, weak enough for them, their purposes and, and that's what they're trying to do again. They, they against uh, underestimate the resilience of the Cuban people and our capacity to live through difficult times and uh, uh, in their view, uh, this is the moment that they, uh, they uh, aspire to, to use to, to create that scenario which uh, would allow them to probably intervene in Cuba or convince the rest of the world that Cuba is uh, a, a failed, uh, like they said, a, a failed uh, government, etc. And that's what they're trying to do now. They know that this, uh, there is no much time. I mean, uh, we have been able to overcome the pandemic. Uh, our vaccines are, are working fine. We, we might end up being the first country to vaccinate the whole population in the world. And, and they know that they, they don't have too much time available. So they're trying to make the, the very use of the time they have. Yes, those are the attacks in social media and maybe other platforms. But as part of the media attacks, foreign outlets said the Cuban government have sustained a siege and a violent approach against these groups. Is this true and how the Cuban people responded to this situation? Well, the way I see it, uh, the 11th of July took us by surprise. We cannot deny that. And uh, it, was a, it was a complex uh, situation. I remember when the, the president went to San Antonio, he went there to talk to the people. He was able to defuse the situation by talking to the people. And then when he, when he was back to Havana, there was already violence all over the place in different places in, in Cuba. And well, I believe the, the, the government and the Cuban people had to react uh, in a hurry to, to prevent an escalation of the, of the situation. And of course, uh, I believe that in, in such a situation, uh, some mm, mishandling of, of force might happen. Uh, it was never to the level that we see everywhere in the world, which is uh, interesting, no? because uh, if the US government was so worried about the handling of, uh, of um, the police, uh, he would have a lot of places to complain about, but well, he were, they were only uh, focusing in, in Cuba. Uh, I believe that this time around we are better prepared for that. We learned the lesson uh, and, and we have to, we had the ability to uh, mobilize the population and especially uh, they, uh, to inform the population. I mean, now the population, the Cuban population is uh, aware of what's at stake, uh, of who is behind it. And uh, that's the response we, uh, we've seen in these uh, last days uh, from uh, youth and people in general who are uh, supporting the revolution and know that what to do in this uh, scenario. So, René, after all we have commented here and for the knowledge of Cubans who live abroad, Cuban-friendly organizations, and all the people who watch us that is interested in this uh, matter, we can say Cuba is in calm. No violence, no disturbances, nothing. What is this? Yes, as I said, uh, 
I believe that probably even some of the people who went to the streets on uh, 11 of July uh, later uh, uh, thought it over and, and understood that, that, that uh, whomever was behind these uh, uh, events wasn't precisely trying to defend their interest or trying to represent their uh, aspiration and the languages. Uh, the way we see it, uh, many people uh, right after the, uh, the 11th of July demobilized and, and isolated themselves from these events. Uh, plus the fact that uh, I believe that the Cuban government uh, this time around has been able to apply a preventive approach uh, to these uh, uh, to these events uh, today, so that's the result of that preventive approach, uh, and I believe that it's, it's been a beautiful day. We are seeing all the kids, uh, well, the mostly white, <laughs> on the streets, uh, going to the schools, and, and the parents are very happy to see the kids back uh, starting again. And uh, again, I believe that uh, this time around, Cuba also learned the lesson. Uh, they are not the only ones who, who can learn from the experience. We also are able to learn, and we learned the lesson from 11th of July, and uh, uh, this preventive approach has uh, given these results. Yes, indeed. We can trust in our system, we can trust in our government, but we have to stay alert. So, René, we thank you for your presence here in From the South and with Tell Us Your English. Thank you.